Hey, this is Nick from JangoFX, and I'm going to be showing you how to use the select node. First thing we want to do is to uh, demonstrate this is to create a point fade. Uh, from here, we can go ahead and start a point fade node. We can make the minimum and the maximum negative one to make this an attractor. And we can see that if we hide the particles with Control P, that's our new bind now, uh, you can see that there is a little tiny sphere showing where this point fade is. And if we change the origin, you can see that all the arrows follow this little indicator. We'll make the top point fade uh, 200 in Z. And then from here, we will make the bottom point fade that we want negative 200. Now that we have two different point fades, the particles should attract to each properly. From here you might say, okay, if I wanted to uh, add these two together, I could do an add. And so in this case, let's just go to add. And we add the two together, just like that. But the problem here is that it basically creates a line fade. So if we went in here and we said, okay, I want a line fade. And we made this right here, negative one in minimum and negative one in maximum to make it attract to this line fade, they basically look the same. The only reason they don't look exactly the same is because the point fades are starting from 200 and the bounding box is 256 in height, or it's 256 units tall. Uh, but otherwise, it would look basically exactly the same. So now that we see that, you say, okay, well, I could just interpolate them. And you can bring uh, an interpolate node by pressing L and clicking on your keyboard. And so now we come here and we interpolate it and it looks a little bit different, but it's still an issue. And the issue here is that it's basically the same thing as adding them together. And you can see that we can change our interpolation, but if we make it directly on the half, it's still essentially a line fade. The reason for this is that if we have vectors that are pointing, say, up towards Z at, eh, let's just say, a 45 degree angle, and then we have uh, arrows or vectors pointing downwards in the negative Z axis at 45 degrees, and you add those two together right in the center, they're going to have an angle in Z of zero. And so, the way to get around this is with our node called the select node. And if we bring in the select node and we double click it, we can see that nothing happens. And so why doesn't anything happen? Because we have to show our indicator to see what's actually going on. Right now you can see that there is a cube selection selecting the entire first node. And so it takes node one or input A and then uh, unselects uh, or, or it selects input A and then whatever isn't selected is input B. And so you can see that if we slowly make this box smaller that input A is selected which is the particle or the the vector field that is going up or the the point fade that is you know in the positive z-axis and everything that is unselected in input B is going downwards. And you can see that it is only, you know, in, in the outside or the, you know, uh, yeah, on, sorry, on the outside of this cube. But we have different selection types. We have a sphere, we have a cylinder, and we have a plane. In this instance, we want a plane because that is what uh, we'll be able to divide the field in the half that we want. From here, you can see that it's not particularly performing like we would really hope it would. And there are two options here. We could either switch the inputs around, and now they work as we would think that they would. Or, if you don't want to switch the inputs around, you can just rotate the selection shape. And in this case, let's just go in the x-axis, and we'll rotate it 180 degrees, and now you'll see that it properly selects between the two. And right now, you can see that uh, we have 10 or the vector field, sorry, is 10 by 10 by 10, so it's 10 cubed. And if we made, say, this equal 11, then we would have five vectors selected at the bottom, five selected at the top, and then some or some vectors, you know, dead in the center of the vector field. And that, that would cause, you know, 
various issues. You can see that we do have one issue where uh, the vectors on this side of, of the middle line are pointing downwards and the vectors on the other side are pointing upwards. And so I, I highly recommend that if you're doing a select node, yeah, you know, well, you don't have to do it, but I would recommend that your vectors be uh, equal in, you know, or divisible by two, your vector density. Uh, from here, uh, there, there's one thing, and we can't completely mitigate this because there is some space between these vectors. Uh, we could make the density higher, so say 20, and we would possibly have less particles condensing in the center, uh, but it, it's kind of hard to mitigate, like I said. But we do have an option where you can blend these vectors uh, like so, and now you can see that they're turning purple because it's between red and blue, and so it's interpolating between the two. And so you can blend between vector fields or, or two different nodes. Uh, but there is one surefire way, actually, to prevent particles from uh, bundling up in the center or being attracted to the center. And the way that we would prevent that is just move the selection up just a little bit until no more particles are going towards that. And so now we can see that, yes, the bottom half has more selection or it has more vectors within its selection. In this case, it has six, and the top only has 10 vertically selected. Or, sorry, uh, this is six, and this is only four vectors, and that equals the full 10, which is you know the uh, length, height, and width of this cube full of vectors. Uh, and so that there is one way that you can prevent the, the particles from bundling or being attracted to the center when you're doing point fades. Okay, and so, you know, let, let's take a, a different thing, or, or uh, what would you call it, a, a different uh, type of vector field. And so from here, uh, let's go ahead and delete our point fades, and we'll just leave our select node there. And we say, okay, we've got a point fade, and it's expanding outwards, and then we want a random node. And let's say that we wanted to contain all of, or we wanted to contain the particles within this box. How could we do something like that? So right now we have vectors that are pointing outwards, and we can just do uh, negative one and negative one. Oh, sorry, negative one, and you know once again it is a point attractor. And to contain particles within this, we want to push our particles back towards the center. But we want this right here to be you know the star of the show or, or the main thing that is you know interacting with particles. So from here what we can do is we can plug in the random because that's what we want to select and we want the opposite of that selection to be the point fade. And from here we know that okay well it kind of looked like what we were doing earlier so let's go ahead and bring in a cube. We can change our position back to zero and z and now if we make this smaller now you can see and we turn our selector off now you can see that all the particles are contained within this box. And if we wanted to make it a little less uh, constrained, we could, you know, blend or, 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 you know, blend the actual selection so that it's not as rigid. And if we do like a full blend, you can see that uh, it does react quite nicely. And it actually doesn't look so bad. But one of the issues with this blending is now it's more of a turbulent point attraction. And so now you can see that, yes, it is indeed uh, pointing all the vectors towards the center. Or, or, sorry, it is keeping everything within the box, but it is uh, pushing everything towards the center. And so this actually is a pretty cool way to do point attraction. And it's actually quite turbulent as well. I bet this would look nice in a game. And so from here, which it would be nice if we actually could cut the selection box in half too so that we could see what's going on. But either way, uh, this right here is how you can use your selection node. Uh, you know, we have, you know, rotation, uh, there's position, uh, and then of course there's size. And you can use this to construct all sorts of different types of vector fields. Just to show you in the presets, 
we have a quad swizzled attraction. And with this, you can see that I have a point fade that brings particles down to the bottom right corner. I have a point fade that brings things to the top right corner. And then we select between the two. And then of course we have the opposite over here where it's in the bottom left corner and then the top left corner and we select between those two. And then we have a diagonal selection that selects between both of these selections. And we could do something like blend between the two or, or, or whatever. And then of course, you know, I, I swizzle it in this particular preset, but you don't have to do that. So I think that that sums up the select node. The select node is the most powerful node in the entire editor, I personally believe. And it can you know, help you create some really great things. And you can also see that you know, in this unique shape, I have a point fade that essentially creates a sphere. And then I have something, or, or a line fade that essentially creates a cylinder. And then from there, I'm selecting between the two. And you can see with this different, this plane, that I'm doing something like that. Uh, and, and actually, you know, I've said that, hey, you know, tutorial's over, but I, I do have one thing that I can try real quick, and I'm going to create a line fade, and then I'm going to make a rotation around this. Let's see, something like this. And now I'm going to make the angle 90 so that it is a perfect rotation. And then from here, I'm going to create a selection node, and then I am going to... Uh, negate this so that it is the opposite of this rotation. So you can see that this is the current rotation. We negate it to reverse it. And then I want to switch between these two. And what I'm going to do is say you have a counterclockwise rotation on the outside and a uh, clockwise rotation on the inside. So now if we blend our selections together, we can see that right now it is set by default to a cube. If we bring this into a cylinder, uh, we can see that we have these protruding edges, which is okay. But what we want to do is we want to make, uh, we don't want, well, I'll show you. We don't want to edit everything at one time because then it won't show up correctly, right? Because uh, then the center isn't going to be uh, rotating the correct direction. So what we can do is uncheck this lock and make sure that the selection is the entire height of the bounding box. And then from here, you can see that we do have some problems that are going on with vectors sticking outside. And of course, as we know, we can blend between the two to, to help alleviate some of the stresses of, of you know, uh, selecting vectors. And if we turn off our indicator, we can see that, yeah, there is some stoppage of particles, but it is quite nice and it does rotate as you would think that it should and so uh that, that's basically it um and, and you know also if we wanted to make this a uh you know spawn inside of a cylinder we can see that you know it, it does you know hold its shape or whatever so that's basically it if you have any questions uh, leave a comment below or send me an email at nick at jengafx.com and I'll see you later. Thank you.